Hello, Andre here from the MSAG team. We'd like to welcome you to the first video in the MSAG UCAT online course. At the MSAG, we believe in widening access to medicine, which means making high quality preparation resources available to as many people as possible. With that in mind, we've decided to publish our entire UCAT self-study course right here on this channel for free. Hopefully you'll learn some valuable strategies that will help you improve your UCAT score and your confidence. If you'd like to practice these strategies, you can head over to the MSAG.com to check out our growing UCAT question bank, where we're adding about 2,000 questions with detailed insights every month. Without any further delay, here's Roxanne and Jason from the MSAG team to discuss the introduction to verbal reasoning, the first UCAT subtest. Enjoy! The verbal reasoning section is used to test reading comprehension skills, which are vital to being a doctor or dentist, as such professionals are often faced with large amounts of text and data that they have to decipher and from which they must draw conclusions quickly. This text and data could be anything from new medical research to a patient's history. It is therefore important that you work to develop your verbal reasoning skills. Many students find the verbal reasoning subtest the hardest part of the UCATS because it is so time pressured. This makes it the most ideal subtest for repeated practice. As with time, your brain can start to recognise patterns in the answers and patterns in what to look out for while reading. This interactive course video series is here to speed up that learning process by making you aware of many of these patterns and giving you more examples with which to practice. There are two main question types in the verbal reasoning section. True, false, can't tell questions and statement questions. For the verbal reasoning subtest, you have 21 minutes to answer 44 questions. You'll be given a passage of text of between 200 and 500 words. They are usually around 300 words long, and then asked four questions based on that text. Our message for four option or inference questions are that there is no substitute for actual understanding. Skim reading is advised by some, but we feel it is better to thoroughly answer the majority of such questions and guess two sets out of every four questions than it is to frantically read everything, take nothing in and get nothing right. We hope that you find all of the videos illuminating and that they help to turn what can be an intimidating subtest into one that seems a bit more doable. Thanks for that introduction to the verbal reasoning subtest, Roxanne. Now we'll jump over to Jason, who will cover some of the basic strategy needed to approach VR questions. There are a few steps you can take to prepare yourself for the verbal reasoning section of the UCAT. In order to achieve the highest score you can, it's very important to keep practicing questions. When practicing verbal and reasoning questions, it's important to bear in mind the time constraints from early on in your practice. The questions in this section are not very difficult and, Given enough time, many candidates will be able to answer all of the questions correctly. The challenge with the UCAT is the time pressure, and so it's imperative that when you do practice questions, you do them under timed conditions as soon as possible to get used to this aspect of the test. It's okay to start your test preparation by reading a few passages thoroughly and attempting to answer the questions at your own pace, but don't make a habit of this. At this stage, if you get any questions wrong, you should make sure you understand why you got them wrong and try not to make the same mistakes next time. Once you've got the general idea of this section and are getting at least three out of four of the questions per passage right, untimed, it is time to move on to practicing questions solely under timed conditions. For the verbal reasoning subtest, you have 21 minutes to answer 44 questions, which is an average of 29 seconds per question. This is not a lot of time, and with practice, some questions will take you less than 29 seconds, and others may take you more. It's important that you do not run out of time and leave many achievable questions unanswered. Although glancing occasionally at the clock and assessing your time remaining may sound distracting, with regular practice, it should become second nature. As there are 44 questions to answer in 21 minutes, it's important to know how many questions you should have completed when you're at least halfway. At around 10 minutes, you should be on question number 22. This will indicate whether you're on track or you need to speed up. You could also split this into quarters if you prefer. So at about five minutes in, you should be on question 11. And at 10 minutes in, you should be on question 22. And at 15 minutes in, question 33. Some students find that they cannot answer every single question in the time allocated. In order to make sure you're able to attempt each question, Prepare to be ruthless in discarding questions you think are too difficult. 
This will help to save a lot of time, as the harder questions may be at the beginning of the section, and you may never get to the easier ones towards the end if you spend too long deliberating over your decisions. In questions with four statements, don't check each of the other statements once you've chosen your answer. Click the option you think is right and move on. For example, if you think A is the correct option, click A and move on. Do not check options B, C and D. This will save you so much time and means that for approximately 50% of the statement questions, you will only have to read the first two statements as the answer will be A or B and you can move on without reading C or D. To get better at the verbal reasoning section, you should practice both speed reading and speed skimming. Have a look at this paragraph and time how long it takes you to read it. Read at your normal pace. The average reading speed is between 200 and 250 words a minute. This passage is 252 words long and so should have taken you just over a minute to read. Another way to prepare is to practice speed skimming text. This involves only focusing on the nouns and logic words. Because, so, must, never, always, therefore, clearly, only, should, reason, thus, necessary, most, etc. of the passage and not on the words that are less important, e.g. verbs. Eat, live, care, breathe, pronouns, he, she, it, they, prepositions, by, on, at, etc. Generally, words that contain three letters or fewer can be skipped. To show an example of this, the words that are highlighted in bold are the ones that should be read when skimming. You can see that by skipping out less important words and words containing three letters or fewer, you can still get the general idea of what the text is trying to say. This can save you time in the verbal reasoning section when answering more difficult questions may require a general understanding of the passage such as questions requiring you to make inferences or draw conclusions. If you have a few months before your UCAT, it's worth trying to increase your average reading speed and skimming speed. This can be done quite simply by attempting to read a newspaper article or the pages in the book that you're reading a bit faster than usual and then assessing your comprehension of the topic to make sure you're not replacing speed for understanding. You can then test yourself on the conclusions and inferences you can make from reading at such speed.